Hi, good afternoon all. Uh, myself, Dr. Sunil Reddy, consultant neuropsychiatrist at IDA Clinics. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. Naresh Vadlamani, sir, to present psychiatric aspects in diabetes. And uh, he pursued uh, his MBBS from Gandhi Medical College, Hyderabad, and uh, uh, MD Psychiatry from Usmania Medical College. He published papers on telepsychiatry, uh, suicide, and uh, Mental Health Care Act 2017, among others in reputed Indian journals. Uh, he's an ex-honorable uh, journal secretary, Indian Psychiatric Association, South uh, Journal Branch, and ex-president, Hyderabad Psychiatric Society. Uh, now he's a chief consultant psychiatrist at uh, Columbus Hospital, uh, Begumpet, Hyderabad. Currently, he's an associate professor, uh, Apollo Institute of uh, Medical Sciences, Hyderabad. Now over to uh, Dr. Nari, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sunil. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, the IDEA Clinics and Dr. Sham and the team, whole team as well, for giving me this opportunity to present an aspects of psychiatric aspects of diabetes. This talk, I think since morning, I have been attending the talk since morning, and all the speakers were brilliant. All the topics were brilliant, and they covered both topics in detail. I hope I'll try to do some justice to the topic which is given to me. Right. Uh, at the outset, I would mean, just like to ask a question. From the way of you, suppose someone asks, India is a land of, so what do they think of? So first thing they'll think of, it's a land of snake charmers or a land of elephants or something like that. But that concept was probably around 100 years old, right? So now no one thinks or no one, even if they think that India is a land of snake charmers or whatever it is, it is completely... Um, what is misperception which they have and we are just happy that they are so ignorant about what is happening in India. Right. So exactly the same thing about psychiatry. Probably around 30, 40, 50 years back, the moment someone says psychiatry, people used to correlate to Freud or some psychoanalytical theories or something. But for the last 50 years, psychiatry has moved at a pace which is faster than the electronic or the IT age as well. So with that small brief, um, and I would like to, yeah, there are some disclosures which I would like to make. The disclosures is I myself had depressive episodes in 1999, got treated and again had depressive episode in 2005. And recently on May 4th, my HbA1c was slightly higher and I was diagnosed with having diabetes. So that is exactly one month back. So considering these risk factors, so probably before 2033, according to American Society of CVD, probably my risk estimate is approximately 27%. So in the next 10 years, there's 27% chance that I may have a cardiac event. And probably before 2053, the risk, again, as per the Alzheimer's Society risk factors, because I'll have of many risk factors, including so there's a 40% chance of risk of dementia as well. So these are my disclosures. So now there is something which is going on. So this slide is very important to discuss. Probably my last slide will tell you what it exactly it is. Right. Now this is just a brief outline. So about the topics which I'm going to cover in my talk. Right, uh, in 1999, 98, 99, I was doing my PG in psychiatry and the very first topic or the research in my whole life was depression and diabetes. So why I chose that topic, I don't know. Right, so I did that paper and it won the Bhagavad Award in the ANSEPS, that is the National Conference as a PG. Probably I was the first PG to win that award at that time. So yes, uh, and I did it under Dr. Bipin Sethi and Chiranjeev Reddy at that time. They were psychiat uh, they were endocrinologists at that time. Now, I think you know the prevalence of diabetes in the general population is around 6% to 14%. Prevalence of psychiatric illnesses is 15 to 20% according to the national survey conducted in 2016. 50 to 60% of diabetic patients have something called as diabetic distress, so which is different from psychiatric illnesses. So that is something called a psychiatric stress or psychological stress. And nearly 35% of diabetic have comorbid psychiatric illnesses, 
the diagnosable psychiatric illnesses they are right and 13% to 26% have of diabetic patients have suicidal ideation and attempts as well and in a study they have conducted 7% that is ranging from 5 to 15% end their lives in suicides diabetic patients i'm talking about diabetic patients and in uh, patients with insulin dependent diabetic mellitus it is around 10% right now diabetes and not just depression but psychiatric illnesses are something called as bidirectional it means that one is a risk factor for the other so either one manifest before and the other manifest a bit later so diabetes may, may manifest earlier and then depressive illness may manifest later or depressive illness may manifest first or diabetes may manifest later so it means they are bidirectional and psychiatric illnesses in diabetic patients how do they affect the diabetic patients there is a poor glycemic control there is an increased risk of complications in diabetic patients it increases the cost of care including hospital care of the psychi- of uh, diabetic patients the quality of life is poor in patients who have psychiatric illnesses with diabetes and yes there's a risk of premature mortality as well right so this is just a brief introduction and i think people sitting here are endocrinologists and other specialists and they all know the types of diabetes by heart as back of their hand or whatever it is but these are the various psychiatric illnesses as well that we need to know what we are talking about psychiatric aspects of diabetes and how these illnesses can influence diabetes or diabetes can influence these illnesses psychiatric various psychiatric disorders are dementias psychosis mood disorders anxiety disorders sexual disorders sleep disorders eating disorders and substance abuse or substance addiction disorders so these are the just spectrum now when i was doing my pg that is around 25 years back or something like that there was institute of mental health or eragada was a complete different hospital completely separate from other hospitals it was completely distinct it was out of the city which is in eragada right so likewise my thought process was that psychiatric illnesses or everyone's thought process psychiatric illnesses are completely different from other medical illnesses right they have no connection at all and that's why the illnesses are somewhere there but if i'm talking here if idea clinic have a psychiatrist in their premises right so the thought process and the science has advanced so far that it means that psychiatric illnesses are to be present in medical colleges or in medical hospital general hospitals alone and not as a distinct from other illnesses right so psychiatric illnesses the concepts are changing they are no more categorical there is no more depressive illness let me state that as well there are no more schizophrenias there are no more bipolar disorders so concepts are moving they are moving into what is called as symptoms or dimensional and those symptoms and dimensional can include physical illnesses as well which are non communicable diseases so that's what is now the concept is of a spectrum what develops first or what develops later so there's a risk on a continuum they are on a continuum like right so i think we all know or you all know about the diabetic medications that are there metformin sulfonylureas dipeptidyl peptidase inhibitors or gliptins so we have sglt2 inhibitors and glp1 inhibitors as well and insulin so those are the diabetic medications and there's a various psychiatric medications so i'm just giving an eagles iv about what why should diabetes and say psychiatric illnesses be common so typical and atypical antipsychotics are there antidepressants mood stabilizers anti anxiety medications i mean medications that affect the behavioral as well anti dementia medications anti substance abuse stimulants and injections and brain stimulation procedures like rtms and ects as well right diabetes i mean since morning we have been we have been hearing about the complications cardiac complications there was a wonderful talk from dr krishnamohan renal complications blindness the just the talk before um, amputations microvascular complications neuropathic complications and psychiatric complications as well 
for diabetes and psychiatric illnesses have these complications also they have cardiac complications they have renal complications vascular complications endocrine complications of psychiatric illnesses metabolic pulmonary and oncological complications as well and in fact in one of the talks before one of the uh, speakers was talking about the diabetes being a risk factor for cancers as well so psychiatric illnesses are also similar risk factor for cancers right so there is a condition called diabetic distress the, when we are talking about the psychiatric aspects of diabetes now di what is diabetic distress is when they are diagnosed with say di diabetes or re recent onset diabetes and the reaction up to the diabetic illness which they have that is the process or the various aspects of that aspects is called the diabetic distress it is present in 18 to 45 percent of patients with diabetes and 20 percent of patients with insulin dependent diabetes mellitus now what are the various aspects of diabetic distresses there is emotional and cognitive distress i mean they worry about long-term complications they fears about the loss of quality of life they have a sense of guilt anger frustration and burnout as well in this diabetic distress there's something called as interpersonal distress they feel very unsupported by the family members and they feel often misunderstood by the family members as well or misinterpreted by the family members so there's a lot of friction it affects the relationships as well there's something called as treatment distress so there's difficulty in maintaining a diet so they want to eat at particular time because doctor says that for diabetes they have long term complications so they are very well motivated to follow a particular pattern so they want to follow a particular discipline some particular routine so that that can help them in managing the diabetes but the diet so they have some difficulty in diet in maintaining that kind of a diet they have stress from changes of medications because of the glycemic control which they require they have a stress of testing regularly and about distress about missing targets right and stress of apathy from health providers that is health providers are ourselves doctors stress of insulin resistance and some i mean they do here by this time they all all hear about the fear of hypoglycemia what happens they always keep the some biscuits glucose glucon d or some brand is there i think so some biscuits ready in their pockets as well right so how to address this diabetic distress is that we have to screen for diabetic distress so there are certain screening tests to what is called diagnose or detect diabetic distress so there this is a dds2 or uh, scale diabetic distress scale 17 point scale so 17 point is 17 question scale so it is in detail to diagnose diabetic distress but i think in a busy clinic it's difficult for a endocrinologist or a physician or other specialist to go through this 17 scale for every patient so shortcut is the two question scale is there the feeling overwhelmed just ask the patients are you feeling overwhelmed by the demands of living with diabetes so is diabetes preoccupying your day-to-day -day activities and day-to-day -day life so that's what it means being overwhelmed and feeling are easy having a feeling that he's failing in his diabetic routine so that he has to maintain that kind of particular routine and is not able to maintain that kind of diet that kind of timings of the diet that kind of timings of medications is not able to maintain for whatever thing and because of that is he feeling stressed or is being worked out so these two questions are fine if they say yes to both of them then you can go for the 17 point questionnaire or then you can refer to a psychiatrist as well right now there is something called as a bex depression inventory to diagnose depressive illness and if that is again a 21 point scale um, but then if that is exhaustive only two questions are again enough in a sitting in a clinic if you ask the patient as a screening questionnaire for depressive illness are you feeling low depressed and down over the last one month on most of the days so that is one question and the second question is are you feeling tired most of the time in the recent times something different from the last previous month are you feeling more tired are you feeling more disinterested in what you're doing not feeling happy not feeling pleasure right so just ask these two questions and that should be fine 
they say yes to both of them either you can start antidepressants i mean we are at the national level we are trying to what is called bring in some changes about prescribing antidepressants um, in the sense that it should be available over the counter because of the high prevalence of depressive illness and the serious, severe complications across including suicides everyone should be able to prescribe antidepressants so that is what it means for the basics of few medications at least okay if the patient is not responding then you can refer to the say psychiatrist or what to do later but then everyone should be able to prescribe antidepressants right now how does uh, uh, i mean suppose the patient asks no i don't want to go to a psychiatrist i think that is a common question the patient says no i'm not mad i'm not tearing my shirt or splitting my hair or singing songs on the road that's what the perception people have about referring to a psychiatrist or a mad person or some psychiatric illness no so basic thing it is the responsibility of the doctor or the endocrinologist to refer to a psychiatrist so like you say that there are some changes in the ecd i want you to see a cardiologist there could be a risk to the life so that's what you say so that's exactly what you say to the patient with depressive illness or any other psychiatric illness there is a risk to the life by suicide 10% risk that's what we said so the patient dies by suicide i mean out of 100 patients with diabetes 10 patients die by suicide right so that is high right roughly around 40% or 50% may die of cardiac illnesses but then at least there is a risk of 10% right so what do you say so when you say that you say that the functioning of the nerves in the brain get affected by both diabetes and depression or anxiety which in turn can affect diabetic control like just like diabetes and heart disease or diabetes and kidney diabetic affects kidneys it also affects the functioning of the nerves in the brain and that's why they refer to a psychiatrist and not to a neurologist so if the if the nerves are structurally affected or damaged then you refer to a neurologist so there's a difference between the functioning of the nerves and the structural affection of the nerves right now management of diabetic distress in an endocrinology clinic or in a physician's clinic so one thing is they have to be aware the physician or the doctor has to be aware of diabetic distress they have to ask about diabetic distress the questions like i have said and assess using some standard scales and sometimes the patient requires some advice only how to manage their routines or how to manage the emotional aspects of it so i think that advice can be given and you can assist them in planning for an action how to take the decisions regarding the management assign refer to a psychiatrist and arrange for follow up as well right now diabetic and psychiatric illnesses so i think when you say like i said the very first slide so there's a spectrum so what it means is from the very first day of my birth there's a risk of several factors so that's what it means so genetic factors are there childhood adversities adult adversities which can affect innate immunity and inflammation and hpa axis dysregulation which in turn affects common with insulin resistance beta cell apoptosis hippocampal atrophy endothelial dysfunction circadian rhythm disturbances and all these are further lead to depression type 2 diabetes cardiovascular disease and dementia so that's exactly what i was talking about right these are the common genes between diabetes and depression right so transcription factor 7 like 2 slc6a4 fkbps brain derived neurotropic factor the clock genes the peroxisome genes as well nr3c1 and c2 5 hydroxytryptamine 2a mao slc2a4 that is coding for the glut4 transporter human necrotic factor and gad as well gad1 as well so these are the common genes between diabetes and depression so it means that if you have these genes you are prone to have both these illnesses and not just these illnesses these genes are common to other illnesses as well right so these are the common intracellular mechanisms between diabetes and depression i won't go into depths of it but i'll try to explain in brief right so these are the common mechanisms of intracellular signaling pathways insulin signaling pathway is the common for both diabetes psychiatric illnesses as well as uh, depression phosphodiesterol inositol 3k and akt 
AMPK, I mean the protein kinase, mammalian, say, uh, sorry, um, of rifamycin, that is um, target, sorry, mammalian target of rifamycin, part, I mean the complex one and complex two, cyclic AMP and protein kinase A, GSK3 oxidative stress pathways, NFK cytokine pathways, BDNF pathways, WNT pathways, calcium pathways, again calcium calmodulin pathways, the Krebs pathways, so these are the various MAPK, J, STAT, RAGE, NOTCH pathways again, HIPPO pathways, so these are the various and the finally then, I mean you will see that there is a neurotransmitter pathway also implicated in psychiatric illnesses. So what it means is psychiatry is not just neurotransmitter, that theory or that concepts have gone, right, so that's what it means, it is not serotonin, it is not dopamine, psychiatry, so it is 20 times something much more than dopamine or serotonin as well. Right, so that's exactly what I'm trying, HPA access as well. Right, now psychiatric medications and diabetes, there are certain medications which precipitate the persons who are prone to develop diabetes. There's not like medication induced diabetes, there's not, no concept of those as well now with the, with the genetic theories. So basic thing is they are prone to develop diabetes, the, the medications precipitate that. Right, so these are the few medications, thyroidine and chlorpromazine have high risk of, these are the first generation antipsychotics. The second generation, olanzapine and clozapine, they are also of high risk. Anticonvulsants, mood stabilizers, GSK3 inhibitors, TCAs, they have mild to moderate risk. And SSRIs, antidepressants, SNRIs, MOA, PKC inhibitors have not been associated with increased risk of type 2 diabetes. In 2003, I think, if I remember the year well, Dr. Sham just pointed out a case in when we both were in one of the institutes in Cambridge in Addenbrooks. He said the patient was on olanzapine, was started on olanzapine, he developed DK. So at that time, the complications were not known. Olanzapine is an antipsychotic that was recently induced at that time and the patient had diabetic ketoacidosis on that time. So I think probably, I don't know whether he did the case, his case patients or not on that patient. But then that threw a lot of questions and from there several, I mean it led to some uh, several other aspects of understanding how the antipsychotic medications work and diabetes works as well. Right. So yes, from there the studies have shown that olanzapine acts on the transcription factor 7 like 2, that's what I said, acts by regulating beta-catenine, WNT and AKT pathways. In liver, it, I mean, uh, transcription factor 7L2 downregulates gluconeogenesis and promotes lipid accumulation. In the islets of pancreas, it controls insulin secretion. I mean, it inhibits insulin secretion, actually, and adipose tissues, and it increases adipogenesis. So olanzapine inhibits the disulfide bonds in pro-insulin, and that's why there is sudden fall of insulin, precipitating DKA. And surprisingly, it was found that smokers have less, those who are taking, say, uh, olanzapine and have diabetes or whatever, so they have less chances of getting DKA because smoking, what is called as metabolizes olanzapine. Right. Now, we have to give the patient, from psychiatric point of view, we have to give the patient olanzapine because he doesn't respond to any other couple of more slides. So he doesn't respond to other medications. So what do we do? We give metformin. So metformin acts wonderfully in patients who are already on olanzapine and there's no weight gain as well in patients who are taking olanzapine. Right, so this is a molecule. Uh, previously we thought a bit differently, but it activates the AMP pathways with increased glucose uptake. It inhibits mTOR pathway as well, decreased cell proliferation, it inhibits insulin receptor substrate 1, it inhibits mitochondrial complex 1 of electron transport chain, it inhibits activation of nuclear factor KB, a transcriptin factor and hence acts an anti-inflammation. And like I said, the, it inhibits the mTOR, decrease, which decreases cell proliferation in that way, it acts as an anti-cancer medication and it, it induces the autophagy pathway. So what medication are we talking about? Metformin, right. So metformin is a miracle medication, both in psychiatry as well as in diabetes 
but it also has so many actions it doesn't act only on one aspect of diabetes so that's what i wanted to we have multiple uses i think gynecologists also use that molecule for pcods i mean it has it's a wonderful molecule and you not stress on it on various aspects where the metformin acts in the intracellular pathways so this is another molecule n-methyl dichlorophenyl tetrahydro 1 naphthalene inhibits phospholipase a1 inhibiting platelet aggregation inhibits plc it inhibits anti inflammation it controls pain via pla2 it antagonizes vesicle activating i mean one protein role in preventing neurodegeneration and anti malignancy induces calcium carbonyl dependent protein kinase it releases neurotransmitters from vesicles causing mood elevation and it stimulates camp erk kreb enhancing learning and cognitions so what molecule are we talking about certainly so now the definitions of ssris are also gone there's no ssris there's no SS snris because they act at multiple levels the serotonin is just one action probably about more than 20 places where it acts so ssri doesn't mean anything the moment anyone talks about ssri so psychiatrists have given up that definitions of ssris so these are the various places where the serotonin receptors are there so again what is diabetes again from layman point of view from psychiatrist point of view initially i thought diabetes is just so what is called insulin is produced less or insulin resistance is there probably because of my age or i'm gaining weight so that is again the de concepts have gone so diabetes is much more pervasive much more uh, progressive illness or it's a i mean if i say it's a developmental disorder it starts from the day one of birth affects various organs not just the pancreas it affects every organ in the body keeps on or more or less it's a degenerative disorder if i can say from starting from day one right so the concepts are changing the understandings are changing so same thing for psychiatric illnesses as well these are the various what is called processes that happen in psychiatric illnesses there is inhibition of growth factors bdnf ngf neurotropin tropomycin related pk phospholipase uh, sorry phosphatidyl uh, phosphatidyl inositol 3 aktm mak mapk pathways vascular endothelial growth factors insulin growth like growth factors fibroblastic growth factors please make it GSK3 quick, phosphorylation sir. yes finished this is one of the last slides so these are the various pathways so coming back to my first slide where i showed the risk factors so we are not talking about psychiatric illnesses, we are not talking about diabetes, we are not talking about anything. We are talking about a multi-organ, multi-systemic, intracellular signaling dysfunction disorders, secondary to genetic vulnerability of single nucleotide polymorphisms or CNVs or mRNAs leading to disruption of organ-specific functioning and dysfunction manifesting as psychiatric, emotional, cognitive and behavioral symptoms endocrine manifestations cardiac manifestations neurological manifestations ophthalmic manifestations leading to impairment of day-to-day -day functioning in personal social occupational relationship arenas and if severe leading to comorbidity or death by that specialty and my specialty death is suicide cardiac specialty death is say mis or say whatever that deaths are nephrology deaths are kidney failures renal failures so like that death by that specialty so what actually in principle all our first specialties or specialists are doing is that we are preventing deaths as far as possible by my specialty he can die from cardiac specialty right but then i'll refer to a cardiologist what the cardiologist does he tries to prevent the deaths of cardiac deaths in that patient that patient may die of nephrology death but the same patient same illness is going on right what are we doing this is something called whack-a-mole game i don't know whether you have seen it in uh, malls you hit one the other one pops up you hit the other one the other one pops up the other one you hit so that's exactly what we specialists are doing i'm trying to hit one that goes down but then some other specialist disease comes up so manifests there so that specialist hits another another it pops up so that's exactly what we are trying to do right so curing treating so these are all big words we are not using them we are trying to manage the patients as far as possible to the best of our specialties.
Finally, it's a teamwork. The same patient has to visit every specialist. Endocrinologist, psychiatrist, cardiologist, nephrologist, neurologist, gastroenterologist, dermatologist, physician, surgical specialties, and even allied health professionals and physiotherapists and psychologists as well. So that's exactly if one patient is there, he has to go through all these, starting from the day one of his birth till probably in the 90th year. Right? So that's exactly why I said the very first slide. I'm looking forward, or probably I know I'm at risk of dementia as well, probably if I live beyond 80 years. So this is a recent, I mean just yesterday, 3rd of June, we just saw the patient. The patient was on Risperidone, amisulpiride as well. Right? He, I mean she had, she's a patient, 56 year old, she has uh, diabetes. Why and for the sir? last four years, she is completely normal. Glycemic control is good. Psychiatric control is also good. And she's on, like I said, the most wonderful molecule, metformin as well. And she, has, she is able to do her activities. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thanks for a wonderful presentation. So one question. Uh, so is there any technical assessment? Is there any computer kind of, like patient walk in and uh, go through a MRI and I have a brain stroke kind of. Is there any kind of screening test for psychiatric assessment? Um, one blanket test for all psychiatric disorders cannot be there. Right, so basic thing you need to say, ask the patient some questions, whether the patient has psychosis or say some, depends upon what pockets of symptoms the patient may have. So suppose the patient has depressive symptoms like feeling low, depressed, loss of interest, decreased confidence. So these are the thoughts the patient has, then you can go for the screening test of Beck's depression inventory which is common or PHQ-9. So that can detect, PHQ-9 is a, a, a health, it's a health questionnaire primary health questionnaire which has nine questions only which can detect the depressive illness and then there are screening tests for anxiety disorders, there are screening tests for eating, sleeping disorders as well. So yeah, on the net, if you just search, you'll get the screening disorder with the patient complaints of them. Right? Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you. So,